Hey, how's it going? Hope everyone is having a good day uh, on YouTube. What I'm going to do is going to go quickly to Facebook and turn this over to a uh, live stream that's public. So just give me one moment. It's always a few seconds of interesting time. So let's see. So I am making it public. Great. So Facebook, you are live with me as well. I made it public. Also we're on YouTube so everyone can actually comment together which is really cool. So let's see how this is looking. I'm gonna go to my X split right now. So do me a favor if you're watching either on Facebook or YouTube go ahead and uh, send me a quick message. Just so I know everything is uh, working. First couple of minutes are always a little bit weird. That's never going to go away. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and check on my tablet. And see what I see while you guys are texting me. Or sending me a message that you hear me or don't hear me or garbled messages or what have you. Okay, so. So I am live on YouTube and so uh, let me just make sure this volume is low and I'm going to go quickly to YouTube. And I see I have a pretty good picture. And I can hear myself. Okay, so YouTube is good. All right, one down, one to go. Hey, Jake, you are on YouTube, correct? Very cool. Good to see you, Jacob. So let me go to Facebook real quick. If maybe somebody will get to Facebook and, and give me a quick shout out there. Let's see. So, so far, Jacob, uh, we are just uh, starting this out, making sure there aren't too many bugs. It's always kind of interesting, right? I mean, but I figure we can donate a couple of minutes to this. Okay. So, are we having sound? Uh, hey, Jake, Jacob. So, um, let me go ahead and listen to see what's happening on Facebook. I'm going to send a quick comment to myself. So, we have sound on, on Facebook, which is cool. Giving myself kiss emojis. Now that pops up. Okay, everything is is perfect. So I did my part to get everything going well. Thanks, Jacob. So everything is good on Facebook and YouTube. So we are all set to go. You're going to hear a little bit of a humming during the summer because of the air conditioner. Uh, no way around that. It gets pretty hot here in northeast New Jersey, that's for sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the hands today. Uh, that's probably going to be the best route to go, I would say. So what's cool, just like last week, we are on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So YouTube and Facebook people can actually go ahead and comment to each other. Let's see here, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and try and work on refining these fingers here that I projected. So that's gonna be our first order of business is to fix the drawing here. 
what I can actually do is go ahead and maybe uh, enlarge it just a bit so we can work on the hand together. Let's see, so we have that here and let's enlarge one here. Oh, that's, that's really big, so let's see if that's too big. I don't think so. I think it would be okay to go ahead and... Hey, how you doing? How's everything from the Cookie Channel? Good to see you. Lupita, correct? Lupita has this great channel, guys, so if you get a chance to uh, check out uh, how she makes these amazing cookies on the uh, cookie channel on YouTube. So definitely uh, go ahead if you want to make cookies for your kids or parties. She's definitely the way to go. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on this, this contour here as you can see and with fingers we're we're always so tempted to make everything a straight line you know I mean everything a rounded line but there are straight lines so we have to make sure that we see things for the way they are not what we think we see so right here in the center is this interesting dark here and we want to try and break this down into tone so we're going to look for the dark accents Oh, you're very welcome, Lupita. Definitely. No, you have a great channel. I subscribed to her yesterday. Really great stuff. And then we can work on this finger here. So basically I'm happy with what I have. Maybe I could adjust. Always be tough on yourselves, you know? Yes, those are great, those proportional dividers. They're, they're ancient too. They really are cool. Okay, so now we can go ahead and concentrate on this finger here. Ah, very cool. And so basically we are working on the angles of the hand and you know with the fingers make sure the bones are going in the right direction otherwise it'll look like she has a broken hand now let's go down to the next finger And you can see how crude the initial lay-in is. 
so we can go ahead and fix those contours and those are just refined contours that we're going to go in later of course And of course you can see the how I'm working on this here. Jake's a really good artist. I I don't know. Do you have a channel yet, Jake? He should. I'm trying to... If he doesn't have a channel yet, I definitely want him to have one on YouTube. He does some incredible work, Lupita. YouTube channels are very hard, right? Uh, they're, they're not easy. Uh, one of the hardest things I started doing was uh, YouTube because it just seems like uh, there's always something to improve. There's always something to make it better. And it just, it just keeps, it keeps rolling, right? How much work it is. But it's a lot of fun. Lupita, you have a nice camera. What cam I definitely see your videos. They look really clean and crisp. So you must have a very nice camera. So I don't see uh, too many people from from Facebook today. That's interesting. Usually, uh, we do really well with Facebook people, especially on a Wednesday night. So let's see what's going on. I'm just gonna go very quickly to Facebook. See if anyone's watching. If you guys are watching on Facebook, go ahead and uh, just give me a quick shout out. That would be cool. Let's see. Oh, Sheila, I do see you there. How you doing? Sheila, how you doing now? I see you. The names were uh, skewed. Good to see you. How you been, Sheila? How's your son doing? Is he watching as well? Rebels are great.
Oh, okay. Oh, right, right. I'm glad you're doing well. I'm always, I'm live streaming so much now, Sheila. So there's always one if you miss it. There's always one coming up. Are you working in this area? Oh yeah, Sheila, that's, yeah, homework, that's no fun, but definitely has to do it, right? And as you can see, I'm just refining this. Just refining this hand here. And then this last is pinky. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try one by one. And, you know, just, you know, one by one, I'm going to actually work on the turning of the form on these fingers. So we'll, we'll work on that, you know, from the thumb all the way down. But I have a better sense of where everything belongs. But right here we have some contours of her knuckles and that's going to be pretty important to catch. Oh man, I'm, how's your mom doing? Is she feeling better? So sorry to hear that. Oh, that is great, Sheila. I love your work. I was so impressed when you showed me. Your paintings are really great. If I can inspire you, then I'm glad I'm doing this. Oh, thank you so much, Lupita. And I just keep refining it as time goes on. And because, you know, it's it's hard to catch it at first, right? So you just have to keep refining. And then we have this other hand behind her. And you'll see here that you know, I have this hand right here. And then I have this hand, which you really can't see but you can't see the fingers, but we definitely have to put that there. And then we have some hairs here. And we're just gonna just very crudely establish them and then go back. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And that's one of the, I, yeah, I photographed the model, Lupita, and I always look for, oh no. Uh, now I see Sheila, your mom's in the hospital. Oh, that's not good. With this, I usually photograph the model, Lupita, and when I do that, I try and, uh, Try and get models who have a lot of expression, who are, you know, are able to uh, really put themselves into the pose. And this one is uh, of Persephone, which is pretty cool. The, the myth of Persephone. Well, I hope your mom gets out of the hospital really fast, Sheila, that's for sure. Oh, 
Okay, so now what we could do is actually before we work on that hand, let's see if we could go ahead and just start working on some of the contours of her shoulder here. And the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually just rework this contour. So we're constantly refining the contour until we get it perfect. And the goal is to make it look like I drew this in just, you know, like one line, one continuous line, even though we all know that, you know, I labored over it. And you see, it, you want to make the line beautiful, like, like calligraphy. why I love drawing so much. Uh, let's see, like on, on this side right here, uh, I'm not sure, Henry. Uh, now, right here, this is definitely intentional. This right here, because it's a very soft edge. And, and that's, you know, paying attention to what's happening with you know, with the with the reference material, and how the edges sort of pay attention to, you know, where these edges are very hard, and where these edges are very soft, and having that combination of hard and soft edges is really going to be uh, something that gives this uh, drawing a real sense of of a timeless, almost old, a timeless old master quality. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, it is. I do love it. I do love that, uh, you know, we're able to establish that. And then we're going to go darker. Now, yesterday when I did uh, some of those uh, paintings that I did in airbrush with, with India ink. Uh, oh, airbrush. Oh, that's good to know, Sheila, that she's doing better. Yeah, so you definitely would... Definitely with pneumonia, you, you want to make sure, they, doctors always want to make sure they keep an eye on her. So thank God she's getting better and she'll be home soon. I'll be saying, I'll be saying a quick prayer for her to get much better. Thank you so much, and I I appreciate that, and it, and that's something that uh, talk about uh, over and over again uh, is make sure that we always get the quality of light. You know what the light is doing as it's washing over her, and that's very important. Is to get that sense of the light as it's coming and affecting each part of her face, her hair, her hands, her fingers. And it's all being like, it's almost like a wave of water washes over or, you know, washes over her. Same thing with the light in this wave of light. So that's something that I always, always try to impart in my work. And always really intentionally really think about the light. Uh, always, always stop. I always stop and say, okay. What's the light doing? How is it affecting this side of her nose as opposed to that side of the nose? And you can see like here it is a lot of a lot of action going on on this side of her nose. And here almost none. The contour of her nose on this side really there's no edge. You see that? There's absolutely no edge here. And that works and because the values are almost exactly the same as what's happening here on under her eye. So very cool stuff. All right, so you can see that we refined the shoulder and that is uh, really, 
really good. So I'm happy with the line on the shoulder. So let's go ahead and just establish the dark on this side. So this will help give attention to that. It's not, it's not a dark line I'm putting, but it's the dark next to the, next to the contour that sort of creates that hard edge here. And of course, we're going to go darker and darker with coarse hatching as we go. Next week, I think I'm going to do something pretty cool is I'm going to actually stream on on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch at the same time. I'll see if my bandwidth can handle it because that's going to be interesting to say the least. You see how that how that shoulder now is really really much more defined. Same thing here. We can darken what's next to the contour to establish the hard edge of the shoulder uh, in front of the hair and in front of her chin. So we want that shoulder to come forward. So in looking at this here, I definitely can see that there's some irregularities in the drawing. So you always want to be flexible enough to make some changes if you need to. Even with a, a projected image, it doesn't mean that it's correct. Could be the angle of the projector. So many different things, but that's why that's why we're humans and we are much smarter than any projector, any printer, any camera. And now that I see this, it actually is helping. Now that I go ahead and fix this drawing. I can see that it actually helps her expression even more. And sometimes, you know, you have to make changes and it's okay. Okay, so you see that I did make some changes here, and they're pretty big changes, but definitely felt that the drawing needed it. So let's go ahead, and it's good that we did see that together, that we're not, we're not married to the drawing at any stage. Uh, drawing has erasers, uh, so you want to be fluid with it. Wow, my coffee got cold immediately. The air conditioner made my coffee totally cold so fast. So I have the uh, Canon SL2 
and it is an amazing camera it just came out in 2017 it's one of the rebels and it has the dual pixel autofocus so it actually will focus on your face and when you move it'll still stay focused which is really great if you're vlogging it also has uh, the same uh, sensor as the twelve hundred dollar uh, 80D and it has time-lapse built-in time-lapse and it has a uh, a uh, microphone external microphone jack which is really great and it goes to 60 frames per second so you still can do slow motion if you go ahead in production post-production you can make it in slow motion which is really great I think I went a little crazy here there we go alright so let's go ahead and just do a wash over here okay so I did a quick wash over there and e Hey Ian, how you doing? How's everything going? You finish your homework? Homework's no fun, right Ian? That's for sure. Oh no, my family calls me Timmy, so that's okay Sheila. You can call me Timmy, no problem. I remember this uh, one guy uh, used to hang out at the butcher shop I worked at when I was a kid, and you know, in my when I was going art and design, and and I I would say yes, sir. He says you call me Mr. Leonard, but whatever you do, don't call me late for dinner. That's what I remember him saying. Pretty funny. So don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> Michael, how you doing? Good to see you, man. How's everything? Glad you make it. Oh, I'm glad you're taking a break, Ian. That's pretty cool. So when we are doing drawings, we always want to make sure that we're using the cross hatching technique in the early going. You don't want to go in with, uh, you know, a 6B, you know, like a cowboy and go ahead and make some darks because what would have happened if I, when I made this big change here in the shoulder, what would have happened if I would have went in with that 6B? Now I would have probably had a hard time erasing it. So now I'm able to uh, erase it and not have any problems whatsoever. So Michael, I'm actually streaming on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, which is really great. So I have two communities together. Then right here there's a little bit of the shadow going in nice I'm glad you took a three day break you probably needed it doing a lot of work a lot of uh, commissions Michael Michael's a really great airbrush artist. He does some incredible stuff. Okay, so now you can see we made the change with that shoulder. 
So I feel good about that change. And also, I like the fact that her shoulder now uh, sort of comes closer over here. And you see a little more of this area of her cheek. All right, so let me just establish this a little more. Oh, those art festivals are really cool. I remember them down in Florida. I used to live in Kissimmee, just outside of Orlando. And those art festivals were really big back then, but I used to talk to the artists a lot and a lot of them did really well. Have you gone to the Winter Park Art Festival? That should have just passed, right? There's one big in Michigan as well, I know. Oh, hey Lupita. So I've been drawing since I was like three years old. Uh, just something I always did. I never, I never wanted to become anything else but an artist, and I always drew. It was just something I always could do. And, you know, of course I went to art school, you know, and always, always working to get harder, but it was always something that I was able to do, uh, pretty quickly if I set my mind to it I was able to get better now is it the same with you with with baking Lupita were you always good at baking is it something that you always like to do even when you were a kid And how about you, Michael? Were you always, uh, you always had the bug for art? And you too, Jake? Some people get the bug later in life with art. But what about you guys? Okay, so Michael, where are you? What I'm going to do very quickly is change the font color. Uh, let's see. So, okay, so this, the black's not showing up, but if I can change that to white, let me see. Or how about change it to a red color? Or, there we go. That's much better, Michael. So let's see. So I move you over there. So now I can see you much more clearly. That's good that you stay that close. Otherwise, you know, the expenses get too high. Right, Michael? Oh, so uh, Jake says when he was in eighth grade, uh, he was in advanced drawing class. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. So I'm glad you really found your passion. And Jake's a very passionate artist, that's for sure. So, Michael, you've been actually uh, drawing and having the bug since you were four. Wow, a lot like me. So it's sort of something you always love to do. Did your parents say, oh, you should do this? And... Uh, did you have brothers and sisters who who were also artists? So as you can see now, 
Oh, okay, Memphis, Tennessee, very cool. I'm just going to go ahead and do some really quick cross hatching and also worry about how the light is turning on this shoulder. I was a sick kid and my mom wanted, you know, keep me occupied because I was home a lot. And so she would draw me pictures. That's the only thing that would keep me quiet. So she would draw me fire engines and, you know, the house with the curly smoke. And, and I just loved it. And I would just, and then before I knew it, I was doing it on my own. I was drawing my own fire engines and my own uh, dinosaurs. And so I kept myself occupied. So you can see we're starting to get that turning of the form here on her shoulder. Then right here, there is the beginning of this hard dark of her arm because this part of her arm is actually turning totally away from the light. And that darkest dark right here, that's called the terminator. Oh, cool. So you guys kind of helped each other, inspire each other. They would draw something and then you would want to draw something better. Yeah, I agree, Jake. It, it is. It, drawing to me, drawing, drawing is like the river. I think everything else, painting, airbrush, everything else is by the streams. But everything comes from drawing. So last night when I was doing this, uh, yeah, I'm so true. Oh, okay. Is a battery on your on your phone? Oh no, Lupita. Yeah. So drawing definitely. That's how it all begins for all of us. And I was also thinking today, you know, like, like, you have an airbrush, you can get a dark really fast, you can do some really great techniques, and it's more exciting, and, but we don't always have a compressor, we don't always have our airbrush with us, so drawing is the one thing that keeps us connected to art, all we need is a pen and a piece of paper, and that's it. And that's the great thing about it. So that's why drawing is definitely the river. Everything else is the stream. Oh, how cool. Wow, you even have a degree in uh, food biochemistry. And that is amazing, Lupita. Wow. So do you work for a company uh, doing biochemical engineering? Biochemistry engineering. Exactly. Exactly, Jake. That's. Oh, dogs. Oh, that's pretty cool. Did you just love dogs as a kid, Michael? And you, uh, you had pets, or a lot of times when kids are unable to get pets, they, they tend to like really. Uh, really think about it a lot. Did you have pets or was it because you couldn't have a dog?
I'll tell you when the power goes out it's horrible it's even worse when the internet goes out because when it gets dark you know no matter what time I remember when Hurricane Sandy came through here we had no power for almost two weeks and I couldn't turn on my compressor uh, it was just it was just a drawing pad and that's what kept me in shape artistically speaking so Lupita that's really great that you have this uh, degree in that it makes your cookies even more amazing Wow, you did? Holy cow. So who is Michael Rooker? Forgive me for not knowing who that is. Is He's a celebrity? That's amazing that you did it through candlelight. In candlelight, I can't even walk without tripping over something. <laughs> you must have great eyes. But then again, when I was... Oh, the actor. God, is it, now he was Mer... Oh, Merle. Yeah. Wow. So you actually gave it to him and he loved it? That is, that is fantastic. That's a real feather in your cap, Jake. Yeah, he was great as Merle in uh, The Walking Dead. So are you guys uh, fans of the show, The Walking Dead? I started watching it last season and I had to like binge, binge watch all of the other seasons. And it was just a really good show. But without watching all the other seasons before, I was totally in the dark when I first seen uh, some of the newer episodes. So I stopped and caught up, and that, that helped a lot. And as you can see, I'm using the kneaded eraser. And what I do is I'm using the pad, uh, the paper, the gray paper. So the gray paper has a tone. So even when I go ahead and let's say put some graphite down, I can actually create texture by just irregularly uh, lightening it. So you do have that feeling of skin. Oh wow, very cool. Oh, that's very cool, Lupita. So it won't be long before you're making a lot of money with your YouTube channel, Lupita. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up. I keep telling myself that too. Uh, it just seems like, you know, when's it all going to happen or what have you. But I'm just going to keep trying. Okay, so Jake has a question. He says here, uh, does painting without blending everything out? Uh, yeah, a lot of the Impressionists have done that a lot. Uh, you look at the work of uh, Seurat. He did a lot of that. Uh, also, some of the uh, painters such as uh, John Singer Sargent, 19th century American painter. 
he did a lot of that. Uh, who was the other guy? Soroya. S O R O L L A. You look at his work, very, uh, very, you know, painterly and very loose. And, you know, it's really great. You know, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's a good technique. I also like very tight work, like stuff by William Bouguereau, uh, Jean Agosta Dominique Angra, Jacques Louis David. Those guys are very tight. Hans Holbein the Younger. So, you know, it's it's all what you feel like, you know? Oh yes, the artistic I feel the same way. I think I think you're it's just another way for an artist to express themselves. And I definitely see that in your work, Lupita, definitely. So let's say if I was to uh, would, would you ship uh, commission cookies for certain events? Would you do something like that? Definitely. You can... You know, there's no there's no rules with painting, really. So you can, if you like it loose, then definitely paint loose. I am going to be right back, guys. So please, uh, please do me a favor. Uh, don't go away. And whoop. okay, I'll be right back, guys. So sorry about that. That's what I get for having coffee during my live stream. <laughs> uh, oh, so thank you so much for hanging out, guys. I'm so glad that you uh, didn't go away. And we're just going to just continue uh, edging this light towards, towards the transition tone here. And this is how we're going to bring that shoulder forward. And you'll see, I'll show you how I actually uh, intend to blend this white. It looks very crude right now. But you see how we keep establishing that edge and keep working on that edge till it actually comes together. We have this beautiful shadow here, cast shadow on this finger. And we're going to refine that cast shadow, of course.
Now I can see here that the light actually sort of bleeds much further over here. And we definitely have time to, uh, you know, work on the turning of the form. But right now what I'm doing is definitely establishing, establishing those that turn. Now remember, we have two different stumps. We have the white stump, which is dedicated just for the white pastel. And then we have the other stump, which is dark, and it's dedicated just for graphite. So you definitely don't want to use this one here because what it'll do, it'll muddy it up and you'll get this like weird bluish color. So you don't want to do that. So you just take, uh, you know, this one's very clean and then we'll just sort of do a circular rubbing here. And I'm also paying attention to how the light actually reacts to the mid-tone of the shoulder. So just as I'm worrying about the, the, the nail on the index finger, I'm also going to worry about the light shape of the shoulder. And then I'll worry about the mid-tone shape and vice versa as we go forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, artists have made of, uh, incredible careers, uh, you know, keeping work very, uh, you know, not blending, doing visual blending. So that works too. So definitely... Uh, there are a lot of old masters to actually learn from with that technique. See, for me, I basically grew up in New York City and I was blessed to have a New York City art education. And even as a young man, we're talking like 14 years old, uh, I was actually 15, I got into the High School of Art and Design. And... So I had some really great painting teachers, but they were more in the genre of Rembrandt, Sargent, and they always liked big brushes and, and uh, you know, they would never draw with the, with the paintbrush, I mean with the pencil. You would start with the actual paintbrush and draw like big shapes and then get more and more refined as you go. And, you know, I learned that way. And also afterwards, I went to the National Academy School of Fine Arts. And then I went to, I studied for a little bit, uh, studied art history uh, at Rowan University. And then I went to Long Island University. And at Long Island University, I studied art history. When I studied art history, all the way from, like, cave paintings to the Renaissance from Renaissance till today and it was an eye-opener oh yes no you you're gonna do really well uh, thank you uh, Lupita you just stick with it and I'm gonna stick with it too so we'll definitely we'll definitely push each other and don't let don't let us get don't let either of us get discouraged and if ever I can give a shout out to your channel in my videos, I will, definitely. So as you can see, now that I established some of that, I can actually take that same uh, method of using the kneaded eraser and just sort of getting that imperfect erasing to create skin texture. And we have this hard edge here, and I'm going to go ahead and blend that in a little bit later. But I don't want to get too far ahead, so we're just going to leave that for now. I have a good indication of what I want to do with that. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go ahead and just establish some of the lights on this hand. Let's make this, uh, let's go ahead and see if we could make this pinky turn a little bit. We get our white pastel. And I can see that the shadow, the cast shadow of her thumbnail sort of goes, goes in and out like that. And then we also use our stump here. can see what I'm doing is just turning the form so we see that thumbnail and that cast shadow right here then it looks like the light sort of sort of catches a slight buildup of light right there and then the same thing on the edge here just a build up of light. And of course we can calm that down in two ways. We can calm that down with the stump. And then if it's still a little strong, we could use that kneaded eraser just to tap that. Now we have here we have the hard edge of the hand coming forward. Ah, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much, uh, Lupita. I really appreciate that. I was definitely blessed. My parents were so good to me to help me get a good art education. And I studied with some of the greatest teachers and they really helped me become the artist I am today. And, and that's, you know, one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel. Because it allows me to reach people all over the world. And it allows me to, you know, inspire them. And then they can go ahead and inspire me too. And that's, that's been the, the beauty of it. Believe it or not... I started this YouTube channel in 2008, in April of 2008. Oh, thank you. Oh, I really appreciate that. Lupita, thank you. Yes, and I, I started this channel in 2008. And back then, there was no such thing as monetization. There was no such thing as someone like Jake Paul or any of those big YouTubers. It was no money involved, it was just fun. And I did it for a while, and then went to some personal problems, and, and then I stopped doing it. I always did like maybe one every couple of months here and there, not enough. You know, just like really quick videos. And then, I don't know what it was, it was like 2017, all of a sudden I said, why don't I do it and make it serious? So I decided to get a good camera and learn about lighting and editing. And, and I'll tell you, YouTube has changed so much since then. It is a whole different ball game. Uh, everything is, you know, cinematography. And uh, before it was just a bunch of people having fun. Now it just seems like it's a little more work. But that's okay. I mean, I like the fact that it's taken it's it's a little it's taken more serious now. Uh, 
as you can see I'm gonna make sure that this is a little darker than this you see how and but this is a little darker than here so you see how we definitely gauge our values and by gauging our values we can we can really have a drawing that looks three-dimensional. And you see how I'm just, just slowly working on those fingers. And let's go ahead and and just sort of really work that in because a fingernail is darker than a little darker I'd say than the hand around it and you'll see how we shape the light so Jacob, do you know the work of Johannes Vermeer? He is definitely one of my mentors. I mean, he was in the 1700, in the 1600s, in Delft, in uh, Holland. Uh oh. Let me see. So we're gonna go with this one right here. See if I kicked out my. My camera here. Okay. okay, so are you guys still seeing this? Because right now it looks like, let me see if I just turn this off and turn it back on right now it looks like this camera has frozen so we're definitely going to go with this channel this camera here so what i'm going to do guys i'm definitely that's my cue to end this i went eight minutes over because i was having such a great time talking to michael sheila uh, lupita jacob it was really great just hanging out and just talking about art together so thank you again. It's uh, great hanging out and talking to you guys. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Uh, and don't work too hard. And remember, every week at uh, 9 o'clock here, Wednesday, I'm going to be on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So you can definitely catch me uh, on there. So Facebook, YouTube, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, 9 p.m. So I hope you have a great rest of the week. Thank you so much for joining me guys, and I'll talk to you very soon Take care